and wants to know investigative uh, hangout discussing investigative journalism from here at Nine News. Today we have Nicole Vapp with us. Uh, she's executive producer of Nine Wants to Know. We have one guest in the chat, Chad, who does not have a camera, so any questions that he has, he'll type and I will read. I'm going to act more of a moderator today, and my name is Misty Montano. I'm the digital content manager here at Nine News, uh, trying to get us more actively engaged in social media and uh, Google. Uh, so with that, we are going to uh, start with one of the questions that we had on our Facebook page. Nicole, the question is, who determines what stories to investigate? Is it politically motivated? Truth, please, because it looks that way to a lot of this. And this is from Marsha Jones on our Facebook page. Well, I would love to hear from Marsha if you wanted to uh, email or join join us one of these Fridays on this chat to hear exactly why you think they might be politically motivated. Um, we get stories from all different types of people. We hear from sources, which some might be politically motivated. Um, uh, we get story tips from uh, our viewers. Uh, we have a phone tip line 303-871-1799 um, and we listen to each and every one of those phone messages and go through them. Uh, uh, and then we have uh, blow the whistle at 9news.com and we read uh, every email that comes into us. Um, some we respond to with uh, help you know, we, we know of agencies or um, people who can help or just have a little bit of a, advice about something. Um, but as a group, we come together in our meetings and decide if a story is, is worth doing a bigger story on. Um, back in the Nine Wants to Know department, we try to look for issue type stories or uh, um, or news that's going on that deserves a deeper look. So uh, we're, we've been doing a lot of stories on um, the death of Tom Clemens um, and, and looking at what happened because it seemed like there needed to be a deeper look at exactly how uh, inmates get out, um, what was motivating Evan Evil, uh, and, and exactly what happened in that situation. So we're looking closely at that. No one asked us to do that. We just decided as a group that this is was a big enough story that it needed some investigative look at, look at uh, what happened in that situation. Um, we also uh, have um, have had uh, a big chunk of our team working on James Holmes and the Aurora shooting. Um, uh, so every time new documents come out, uh, we jump on it, look at it, call our sources, and and try to see you know what else we can learn about what happened there. I think there's a lot of um, interesting things that c will come out of um, that investigation. Not just who did it, because I think um, you know he's he's been charged, he's going through the, the court process. But I think it's more um, the interesting things to me are you know what led up to it, uh, who knew that he was um, possibly homicidal, um, and, um, you know, what kind of um, institutional uh, things that were going on either at University Hospital or Aurora Police or Aurora Fire that kind of led to some of the uh, uh, ways things kind of transpired the night of the shooting. So um, we're going to be looking at some of those things. But as far as when news tips come in, we take a look at it, we read it, we see if it's something that we've heard a lot of before. Um, you know, if we get something about the Nigerian scam, we'll probably email the person back or, you know, if if they've called us and let them know that, you know, this is a scam, this is what happens, this is what their next step would be, um, unless there is a hook to it, something new, something different that we think that the uh, viewers need to um, hear about, you know, right away, um, that it's, it's something that is so different that no one has reported on it yet, and you wouldn't be able to Google that information or find it on 9news.com and, um, and, you know, be able to understand, you know, what's going on in that scam or whatever it is that that person's emailing us about. Um, 
we so then you know we kind of look at the other tips if it's something that kind of falls under we have kind of unidentified beats that we kind of work on some things that we find interesting um, you know we'll work with our reporters and see um, for instance Will Ripley does a lot of towing stories so if I get a towing tip I kind of rely on him to tell me if he thinks it's a new story or not or if it's something just along the same lines that we've already reported because you know we don't want people to just keep reporting the same thing over and over again unless nothing's changing in a situation and someone promised for it to be changed and so we need to uh, go to who's responsible and ask them why and and we've done that before too okay thank you Nicole uh she wasn't the only one in our Facebook conversation when we posted about this today who asked about our political motivation behind choosing stories, whether it's investigative or not. Um, I think out of the those who did reply to our comment, three of them was asking about bias. Um, JJ asked, why is it so biased? Why is good evil and evil good? And another person asking us, uh, Christina Elman, asking us about truth, how much truth is behind the news, how much is politically induced agenda. I personally think Colorado has gone through so much in the past year. Every big hot political conversation that's being had on the national level is being had on our state and local level as well. Everything from pot to gun control, civil unions, gay rights, etc. Um, so a, a lot of people are questioning us. They're questioning us our motives. They're questioning the way we produce stories and the way we put them on on TV. Uh, can you address some of the steps that we take to ensure that we are not being biased, that we are putting out um, both sides of the story? And Chad, as we're talking, again, if you have any questions, please type them up so I can add them into the chat. Well, I would say if you came to one of our editorial meetings here, you would see a cross-section of Colorado, probably not unlike any other office or, uh, you know, group that gets together at a school or, you know, wherever. Um, uh, there are people who, um, you know, bring a lot of different um, uh, backgrounds or uh, uh, different uh, from different parts of the country that you know that we all come from kind of somewhere else I come from Nebraska and uh, we all bring different thoughts and um, experiences to the table and we discuss them and we have a debate that you probably have in your living room after the story airs we usually have before the story airs so if it's something on a gun control bill or if it's something on or an idea about you know the pot stories um, uh, we we have this conversation uh, going into it and try to think of all the different sides that we can um, and discuss what should be in this particular story so you may see a story that is specifically on one part of the gun control bill and we don't bring up all the other stuff that goes around that bill because we're doing something specific to to that issue and that may seem biased but we're trying to dissect that one issue we're we're not um, going to do gun control in one newscast in two minute time that we have to tell that particular story that day we're not going to do the whole look at it um, I think you will look back over all the stories that we've done on guns and probably see many different things that may some may seem very conservative some may seem very liberal um, but it's because we take a very specific look at it you know over time and I think there's probably some people who think even doing a story on a certain issue may be one or the other uh, you know conservative or liberal just the fact that we're doing the story but um, there's no agenda as far as you know we're gonna be like this and we're gonna try to get this idea out there in a newsroom like this with as many uh, opinionated and uh, uh, passionate people about making sure that we're non-biased and telling the truth and, and getting the word out um, you there would be no way to do that um, because uh, 
there's no you know one voice so if one person did a story and they felt it was this way there would be such a big discussion and a big move that it we really push each other to to be more uh, factual in our in our reporting so um, you know no one uh, could say that it, it's a hundred percent all the time because we you know we are humans um, but uh, I think in, in the majority of our stories you will see that um, in investigative stories we have to have the truth in our stories all the time we have to get down to um, is there a public document that reflects this is there uh, police uh, go on the record to talk about something you know we could at any time be sued for what we're reporting so we really try hard to make sure that we are uh, as truthful as possible and um, that's that's what you can you know trust okay thank you Nicole uh, Chad he has typed in a question for us uh, Chad's question is have you ever turned down a story to report on because it was too hot or too political or whatever um, I wouldn't say we've ever turned it down because it's too political I think it's more have been a matter of what could we go out and report what are our sources what could we verify in the tip that may be politically driven or may not be um, the hottest topic or the hottest topic right now it's, it's really about what are we what can I what can we do what can we do to verify and vet the story and put it on the air um, Nicole do you have a response to that yeah uh, you know I've been here for 12 years now and never have I been asked not to air a story because it's too political because it involves an advertiser um, because it's it, it, it will get too many people upset um, Half the stories that we've ever done would never have been done if any of those, um, you know, things were um, ever uh, brought up in our process. Um, we we have not aired some stories that people thought we should air, and the only reason why we haven't aired them is because we did not have the story the way people some people may have thought it should be. So if they thought this person was doing this we did not have that story nailed down and we uh, we're only going to do stories that we have completely nailed down we're talking about people's reputations their their business livelihoods um, all those things we must have it nailed down before we do the story okay uh, thank you for that we have um a couple more questions in regards to our process. Uh, one actually is from uh, Ellen, who was able to join our Google Hangout last week. Um, she listened to us. She t uh, listened to what we were said about what would be newsworthy. Um, she believes her news tip did meet all the newsworthiness criteria, and that she sent it in, but hasn't heard a response back yet. Um, the first thing I would say to that is I would need to follow up with her and see exactly which email she sent it to, or did she use the tip line so we can track down who actually found that tip and was able to start working on that tip um, and uh, to be able to give her an answer what happened on why she hasn't had a response yet it could be that we're still working on it or unfortunately we do at times get hundreds of emails a, a day um, it's most you know it's not unusual for me to sit down to 600 emails in my inbox in one, one day and while we have many people searching through all of our emails, uh, we do miss them sometimes. So we do have to ask people to send in tips more than once or to call and verify that we're looking at their email to uh, make sure that it didn't fall through the cracks or that our spam filters didn't um, filter it out and put it in a delete box or a trash box um, with that. Uh, the other question about process, Nicole, is... Um, how do you find contact info for private individuals who don't have published contact information? That comes from Brad Lopez on our Facebook page. Um, well, we, uh, a lot of television stations have a subscription to uh, services that are available um, to public information. So if you've ever put your phone number, address, um, any uh, of Phone, other information on public 
documents like your house or uh, voter registration or anything else, uh, we have a service that um, looks through all of those public documents and puts together a little um, rundown on a certain name and then we kind of make um, uh, some determinations based on um, is it the right age of a person or close to a right age of a person. Also a lot of, uh, if you've ever been arrested for a crime or charged or been through the court process, a lot of your information is available through there. Uh, to follow up on that question, I know people ask then, well, just because I bought a house 10 years ago and that was in a public record, what right do you have to it now? Um, it, can you um, tell me if I'm correct or wrong on this, Nicole, that um, if it's public record, anybody can access it. Anybody can have a service like we subscribe to mm -hmm. and can access. This isn't just something that journalists can do and um, can go out there to hunt you down. D truly, it's public information and uh, court records, etc., that we have access to. Yeah, anybody can go through all this information, and the government has all this information on you too, so they have a way of getting in touch with you as well. Um, I would say, uh, I don't look at it as I'm trying to hunt somebody down. Um, when someone's in the news, or somebody they know, or somebody they love is, is in the news, whether it's a good or bad thing, I want to give them the opportunity to speak, to um, tell us their side of the story, to uh, share more about their loved one. Some people don't want that and that's okay. I still track them down and call them and, and give them the opportunity to do that. For those who do, they have a story to tell. They feel like them talking about whatever happened to their family or loved one or friend um, can help others in some way. Um, I, I just want to give them that opportunity and uh, I think it's it's better. You may not be thinking of it in in a crisis situation um, that you would want to do something like that. So I I check them down to give them that opportunity. I don't um, personally think that we should be uh, badgering someone or or calling too much or you know that kind of thing. But we do want to reach out and 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 give people the opportunity because some people really feel the need to tell their story. Some people don't, and that's okay. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. Um, to, I really think there's only two more questions that we have time for, so Chad, if you have anything more, please get it in. Thank you again for joining us today, even without the camera. I love that you're able to participate through the chat. Um, I want to give Nicole the opportunity to speak about our ongoing going um, series fail to death we had just another report last night from Jeremy Hohola and then the last question that we took on Facebook and we get often and um, you know I, I know what my answer to it would be um, it, it comes down to resources at times uh, but uh, one of our Facebook followers is asking where is the investigative journalism on the murders of our ambassador and three others in Benghazi um, we have an interview. Our own Kyle Clark interviewed uh, President Obama and specifically asked him that and kept with the follow-up questions to speak to him and, and get uh, answers uh, to his questions in regards to that situation. But I think we need to address what we can do on a local level. There is national media resources and then there's our local level resources. And if I'm wrong on this, Nicole, please correct me. But what would you say, and I'm sure you've heard this question before many of us have, why haven't we done more on Benghazi or whatever investigation behind something like that or something coming out of the White House or a larger government entity? Um, I kind of, it's kind of interesting that this is asking the same time when people feel like we're uh, politically biased in how we choose to do news. I would say that, especially in this Benghazi issue and it happened during uh, President Bush's administration as well when uh, people would ask why aren't you investigating uh, the start to the Iraq war why aren't you investigating how they did this and and the the fact is is that we are equipped and we our jobs are to investigate what happens uh, and affects Coloradoans and I know that you would say that this does affect people in Colorado but we are just not um, 
we, you know, we do not have the resources to go to Benghazi or, you know, find out more about what happens on that scale because we are spending our time, money, and resources investigating what happens here in Colorado, and um, that's just that's just what we were hired to do and what we um, will uh, end up doing. Now, that said, if someone has information about a person who witnessed something who lives in Colorado or um, they were at that uh, at the embassy at the time of the attack or you know whatever if there is a Colorado connection we will look at we will look at it and track it down and um, I know there's enough interest in people wanting to know more about what happened in Benghazi that we definitely would take a look at that um, but uh, as far as you know, you know, practically moving to D.C. or going overseas to investigate this is not something that we're we're able to do. And there's plenty of stories going on in Colorado for us to look at here. We we can't get to everything, and that kind of goes back to the the question about um, your news tip. We are not able to respond to each and every news tip that we get. Um, yeah. If you feel like you really do have a story I would send another one um, make them um, semi short I wouldn't make them too long because it just gets confusing um, tell us why you think something needs to be investigated and what the bigger uh, story is that you think is going on and we will get back to you it's a good point about um, if you're if you're emailing us from a Yahoo or a Gmail account sometimes those do get sent to our junk mail so you can call the 303-871-1799 and leave your news tip there as well. Um, we do listen to all of them and we do read everything. Um, so uh, if you feel like we've missed something and we haven't replied to you, go ahead and send it again. Sometimes it takes a few times before some someone sees it and goes, you know, I do see a bigger story there. So, um, so, you know, so keep trying. That That's what I would say. Um, and back on to our Fail to Death series. Um, yesterday, the um, the uh, uh, legislature passed out of committee a um, hotline that is one of the things that so many uh, advocates for children wanted to make sure that we talked about in our series um, last fall is getting a hotline. So when you see abuse or you suspect abuse, you know where to call. I know personally um, I saw something questionable in my neighborhood a couple of years ago. I had, it took me quite some time to find out exactly who I needed to call and um, I ended up calling three different numbers before I got to the point where I found the right person to report this to. And um, I think of people who are kind of on the fence about reporting something like that or um, maybe nervous or really short on time and, and by the time you think of it two days later you're like, oh I guess that's just not gonna happen. I, I, you know, I totally forgot about it and there's nothing they can do now. With the hotline you're gonna be able to call right away. Hopefully this number will be something that you remember and and it's in the back of your mind anytime you see something. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're at the mall in a different county, you won't have to look up the phone number to uh, that county to try to figure out who to report it to. So um, it's still going through the process, and you know, it might get passed, it might not, but I think you can see through our stories like the one last night that more of us need to be looking out for kids because they really are. Um, in some cases helpless and um, unfortunately I think it, it's telling about a society that kids are dying whether there are kids or not. All right thank you so much Nicole thank you Tad for joining us thank you for our viewers who have popped in and out and have watched us this is something that we're going to be trying to do more often weekly basis it might not always end up on a Friday and it won't always be about investigative journalism we hope to incorporate the other areas of our news department everything from education to weather and general news assignments and our fun stories as well so we encourage you to keep uh, looking at 9news.com our Twitter Facebook and Google Plus 
profiles to see when the next schedules are so you can join or submit your questions on whatever topic it would be. And again, if you do have a news tip for the investigation team, that email is below the whistle at 9news.com, all one word, and the phone number is 303-871-1799. Thank you, everyone.